Well, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my little unorthodox video journal about knitting and other crafting. Kinda trying something new here, so if you will, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Once upon a time, there was a 12 month period when I knitted six of Isabel Kramer's Ravello sweaters. Here's how it went with a bit of a storyline and a lot of details about the knits. It all started at September 2019 when I was traveling in the south of France. I was there three months having a total escape adventure journey away from my little life full of non-special days. I traveled alone and spent basically all three months in a little village. I had a really wobbly basics of friends and I did not actually know anyone there, so it was quite solid solitude I experienced. I knew this when I went though, so it was okay. Temperature were something like 30 plus degrees Celsius by day and I spent my days mostly outdoors. However, I had a lot of time for myself, especially in the evenings. So I thought I could knit something. Weird to think of this now since nowadays I knit all the time. After some search, I landed on Ravello sweater pattern by Isabel Kramer. Nearest yarn store was in Montpellier, so there I went. Shout out to the store, La Mercury, Mer you know. Lady who served me did not speak much English and with my friends I could not actually explain my needs, but she did not let that stop us communicating. Since I hadn't actually planned to knit on my journey and traveled, and traveled only with a backpack, I had to buy the needles and everything. I left there with two sets of Knit Pro Symphony interchangeable cable needles sizes 3 and 3.5 mm and with a multiple skeins of Lang 150 in three colors. It is a sport weight yarn 150 meters per 50 gram skein and it's a superwash treated 100% merino wool. I had not heard of this yarn at that point, but it felt really soft and squishy to touch and I was confident I could get the right gauge with it. I fell in love with the color choices of a Ravelry user Claire Dupont who test knitted the pattern back in 2030 and I wanted to make something similar. The pattern called for a light fingering weight yarn, holds garn super soft wool with 287 meters per 15 grams and 3 to 3.5 millimeter needles and a gauge of 22.5 stitches and 30 rows in 10 times 10 centimeters square of knitting. The pattern is quite straightforward. It is knitted top down in the round with raglan increases. However, there is short row shaping in the neck and I had not done before pearl increases to left and right. I think I needed the first 5 cm of the yoke like 3 or 4 times to get it right, but nailed it after all, thanks to YouTube tutorials. I also broke one of the wooden knitting needles when maybe halfway through the yoke. Like I said, it did not have an endless access to the vaults of spare needles. So, I winked a transition from 3mm needles to 3.5mm needles and decreased some stitches after some rather promiscuous judgment. I'd say, unless you know this, you cannot see the decreases and the chains in the gauge. So, quite pleased with the emergency redress. And look at the finished garment, oh my goodness! And look at that sassy hair I had! I worn this hands down the most of probably all of my knitted sweaters ever. The yarn is extremely durable. It is Australian merino wool and in my opinion the quality price ratio is very good. Today it is approximately 7 euros per 50 gram skein. I use 380 grams so a bit less than 8 skeins for a medium size sweater. Back in the day it was around 5 euro per skein, so 35 euros for a long lasting very good quality sweater is not bad at all. If the garment stretches in use, it goes back after washing, even though the yarn is super wash treated. I worn this at home, at work, at jogging and to walking. 
I washed it several times in washing machine with wool program, wool soap and inside of a laundry bag. Had I washed it by hand all these three years, it probably would be as good as new. However, after remarkably frequent use, it starts to show some signs of wearing. And I still wear it. It is probably not quite as decent as it once was, but still much loved and much used. Somewhere at the beginning of November 2019, I came back to Finland. Back then I was getting rather interested of dyeing yarn. I tried acid dyes for the first time after watching a bunch of tutorials about different techniques. My very first skein was rather successful, if I may say so myself. Also wanted to knit it immediately and on a whim started my second Ravello. The pink yarn is some kind of fingering weight sock yarn with 75% wool, 25% polyamide. The light grey yarn is a commercial yarn at Libris Baby Merino. It is 100% superwash merino wool and also fingering weight 180 meters per 50 grams. Unfortunately, I did not manage to trace back what's my needle size and which size I knitted. Due to my jump into knitting without too much consideration, I ended up making a cropped version for I ran out of yarn. Kinda like the result though. If I could go back in time, I would leave the dark grey stripes out. Otherwise, quite pleased with it. Okay, I should have done it a tiny inch bigger. It is a bit too body hugging for my taste and that lessens the comfort of wearing the garment. So in this spring, this piece was gifted to a very dear friend of mine who is approximately size of a hobbit and she, bless her, is very happy with her sweater. The third Ravello took place not long after, in December 2019. I was still most excited of yarn dyeing. Suddenly I had a constantly growing pile of small test skeins. Had heard and read from many different sources that you should use the first ones while you still love them. Because when you improve the skill, their shine in your eyes starts to fade. So became my third Ravello. Can't really trace back all the yarn, but I think it's mostly mostly sock yarn with 75% wool and 25% nylon. Also other bits and pieces from here and there. And the result, I'd say it's somewhat cheery. I've probably just winked about everything but the yoke. Sleeves are slightly puffy and the shirt is also shorter than in the pattern. Length is somewhere between the hip and waist, I think, but probably, clo clo <laughs> but probably closer to the waist. Sleeve cuffs are slightly too tight and I should fix them for more comfortable use. It is also worth mentioning that there is approximately 60 to 80 yarn ends weaved in because of the insane amount of different yarns and stripes. I'm going to think a good few moments before I make another shirt with 80 yarn ends to weave in. Story of the fourth Ravello is very similar to the third and I needed it just after the Covid hit in March 2020. I had been testing some different red dyes and had a cute little rainbow of a red small skeins. The idea was to make cute slightly faded cropped sweater. I'm pretty sure the yarn is Adlibris Baby Merino, a 100% merino wool yarn with superwash treatment. And here's the result. This is one of my favorites. Goes really well with dresses and it's even a little sassy in my opinion. There was also a good amount of yarn ends to weave in, but still remarkably fewer than with the previous one. With this, I did something that I can completely understand even this day. I accidentally, with scissors, cut a hole to my sweater. Not a few strands cut, but two or three centimeters long cut. Yep, I don't even know what to say. Back then, I had not heard of visible mending or did not have a lot of skills on mending in any way, visible or not. So I ended up just making a slightly obscure patch over it with a darning needle and call it a day. 
if it someday happens to unravel, I will make the patch a bit more sophisticated. The fifth Ravello was knitted fall 2020. It is also done with the self-dyed leftovers and the colors are arranged like a rainbow. Tried not to make as busy striping as in the third Ravello, however, it was going to be somewhat brightly colored anyway. Not much to say about this really. I think the yarn is mostly fingering weight and mostly Adley Breeze Baby Merino 100% uh, Merino wool with superwash treatment. I think this yarn is peeling relatively easy though, but it's soft and squishy against the skin. The sixth, and at least for now, last Ravello. It came into being when I was once again doing some yarn dyeing. This rusty color was meant to be something really different and I was at first really disappointed with it. But after it had dried off, it kinda looked nice anyway, even though not what I was going for. And I thought it would make a really wearable everyday sweater with some dark grey yarn. So there I went again. The rust color yarn is again some sock yarn, 75% wool and 25% nylon. And the grey yarn is again Adlibris Baby Merino, 100% merino wool with superwash treatment. Once again I took the yarn I had laying around and food have thought I ran out of the grey yarn. Just when I had finished knitting the body and I had maybe 10 centimeters of both sleeves started. And also the seller had run out. And it just did not seem to come back. So I purchased another grey yarn and hope for the best. I think it was Langa Maailma Ohuempi Juhla Langa. Not sure if this is in the market anymore. However, I think it was little thicker than the baby merino and it was 85% wool and 15% polyamide. I thought the transition would not look so obvious if there would be some striping in the sleeves, so I added the black stripes. Retrospectively, not really sure if that was a good idea or did the trick, but hey ho. On the other sleeve, for some reason, there is a bump in the shape, but you cannot really see it when the shirt is on, so that's nice. Also, something about the textures of these two grey yarns is really different. The sleeve yarn collects, collects insane amounts of cat hair. Not really sure why this is. And that is that! All my six Ravello sweaters. In general, maybe worth mentioning, is the boat neck of the sweater. Sometimes they tend to come rather high, which may be something to keep in mind if you have sensitivity issues like me with certain necklines. Boat neck is not actually a high neckline, but it may touch your neck. In the original design, the neckline is actually not finished, which leave, leaves it into more relaxed shape. In the pattern there is option to use I-cord edging, which I've used and that might bring the edge a bit closer to the neck. However, the neck thing is definitely a personal preference and nothing else. It is not even a critique, just an observation. All in all, Ravello is an awesome pattern and easily modified into one's needs. Okay, that's everything. Thanks for watching.